Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Creative World. My name is Ryan, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick and dirty editing breakdown of the following image. I start out by duplicating my original image. Then I use the pen tool to create a selection around my subject. Once you have the selection fully made, go over to the paths tab, right click the path you just made and make selection. Hit okay with the default values. Go back to the layers tab and on your duplicated layer, go ahead and create a layer mask. If I turn off the original image, you'll now see that I have separated my subject from the background. From here, I exported my image with transparency to use over in my 3D program to create my background. To create my background, I used Blender, which is a free 3D modeling program. If you're looking to get into this field, I highly suggest learning this program, as like I said before, it is completely free and there are a lot of really great learning resources online. As you can see here, my scene is pretty simple. One pillar that I downloaded online, duplicated six times, laying on top of a flat plane. The columns that I downloaded were from this website called archive3d.net, where they have a bunch of really good free 3D models for you to download. I also used a website called texturehaven.com where you can find a bunch of realistic 3D textures to use inside of your scenes. Between these two websites, you should be able to make pretty basic yet really detailed scenes inside of 3D. Going over to my render view, you can see with just these simple elements and a couple of lights, you're able to create something that looks very realistic. If I go into my camera view, you can see here I enabled depth of field which helps create a little bit more realism to the scene. Once I was happy with the lighting and had it match up to my original image, I went ahead and exported it. Once I brought my 3D render into Photoshop, the next step was adding the rest of the background image. I could have made this in 3D, but I wanted to save myself some time, so I just used a stock image to fill in the background. I found an image on pixabay.com of this old cathedral steps that I thought fit the image pretty well. Now obviously the color and the depth of field doesn't fit, but we'll get to that. When you first bring in an image, try to get the horizon line to match that of the destination image. You can see here the floor coming from the bottom of the stairs somewhat matches the perspective of the floor in my 3D render. To get the colors and values of the background image to match that of my destination 3D render, I used what I call correction curves. Just by turning that curves layer on, you can see that already the background image almost perfectly matches the background. I'll explain how I made this curves layer as I pretty much used this exact same correction technique on all the rest of the stock images that I brought into my 3D render. So I started off by going down to my adjustment layers and creating a curves adjustment layer. Holding Alt or Option on a Mac, make sure you clip that layer to your stock image. As you can see here, any adjustments that I make on my curves layer only adjust that stock image. Now comes the tricky part. On that curves adjustment layer you just made, make sure you have the property selected and not the layer mask like it is by default. The next step is to sample the colors from your destination image to which you will apply to your stock image. These three eyedroppers right here are the ones you're going to be using. This is the black point, midpoint, and white point. Start by double clicking the black point. Once this color picker window comes up, you wanna select an area that is the darkest on your image. Keep in mind that if you have multiple color values and lighting throughout your image, you want to sample an area that is close to where you're placing your background image. For example, these stairs back here are not going to be the same lighting as the lighting up front in the front of my image. So black point here would be more accurate than a black point up at the front of my image. Once you've found that black point, go ahead and click okay. It'll ask if you want to save it as defaults, just hit no. Next, double click the white eyedropper and then select one of the brightest points of your image in that area that you're placing the stock image. That would be this pillar right here, or maybe the ground right here. Go ahead and click okay. Then double click the middle eyedropper and then select a value that's somewhere in between the brightest and the darkest. Go ahead and click okay. Now, single click on each one of these eyedroppers and then click the corresponding points on your stock image that you're bringing in. So the black point on my stock image would be probably through these windows. The midpoint would be maybe the lower part of this wall. And the white point would be somewhere up here at the top where the lights are. Now you can see with just those three clicks, the image almost perfectly matches the color and values. The next step in getting the stock image to fit my background is to add a little bit of blur to it. With your stock image selected, go up to Filter, Blur, and I like to use Box Blur, or you can use Gaussian Blur, whatever is your favorite. And boom, just like that, with the simple curves and blur, your stock image should almost perfectly fit the rest of the background. Now to make the transition a little bit cleaner between the stock image and the 3D render, I created another levels adjustment and I just brightened up the bottom part of that stock image. Now this technique of creating a corrections curves layer is something that I use several times throughout the entire image. So let's move on to how I created everything else. Going up the layers panel, I darken the overall image just a little bit. I then wanted to add a little bit more texture to the ground of my image. I did this by bringing in a stock image that I found on pixabay.com 
matching the position and perspective of my original image, and then creating a layer mask, painting in only areas that I want to keep. Next, again, I created one of those correction curve adjustment layers. And with that, you can see already the ground image fits pretty nicely into this original image. But the overall effect was a little bit too strong. To lessen this, I double click the layer to bring up the blending options. I used these blend if sliders to get my stock image to blend into my original image a little bit better. If I adjust this slider, anywhere that the underlying layer is dark, that's where it will disappear. And the other way around, if I move this slider to the left, anywhere where my image is bright underneath, my stock image will disappear. On any of these sliders, if you want the adjustment to be a little more subtle, hold Alt or Option on a Mac, and then you can break apart these arrows, and that will feather the adjustment. For this image, I made it so wherever the image was completely dark, such as the cracks, my stock image would not appear. It's a very slight adjustment, but something as simple as this goes a long way. Since this was a cosplay shoot from the Diablo video games, I thought it would be fitting to add some skulls and bones on the ground. As you can see here, I've added some bone piles in the foreground and the background, as well as a skull over here in the midground. If I open up the layer for this skull, and turn off all these adjustment layers, you can see the steps that I took to get it to fit. First, I darken the image just a little bit. Then I added a corrections curve adjustment layer. And then looking back at the image, I realized that it was just slightly too saturated compared to the background. So then I just created a hue and saturation adjustment layer and just turned the saturation down the slightest amount. I repeated this process for all the other bone piles that you see. Next, I brought in a stock image of some light rays, added a layer mask and painted away the areas where the pillars were. And then I changed the blending mode of that layer to screen. To add a little bit more atmosphere, I added in some background particles from a stock image that I found online. I set the opacity of that layer to screen, added a layer mask and painted away some of the bottom parts, and then just reduced the overall opacity of that layer. Next, I brought in my subject layer that I cut out originally from the beginning. The very first step I took was drawing in the shadows on my layer. I created a layer, and then I just used a dark brush and painted in areas where I thought the shadow should be. At this point, I want to make sure that my shadows are matching the values of my background image and not the values of my subject, since I'm about to change those with a corrections layer. I then dodged and burned my subject using curves. These three adjustment layers right here are just selectively darkening certain parts of my subject to help get them to fit into the background a little bit better. I then created the correction curve adjustment layer. And with that, my subject almost perfectly fits into the background. To enhance some of the metal on my subject, I created a layer set it to overlay, and just paint it in white over the metal areas. Next, I drew in some particles using one of my custom brushes. After the particles, I then added in two more lens flares. Once I was happy with my image, having the top layer selected, I held Ctrl, Alt, and Shift, and pressed E to merge all visible layers into a new layer on top. I then set that layer blending mode to overlay, went up to Filter, Other, High Pass Filter, and then just selected a radius that yielded the sharpening that I was happy with. Next, I again merge all visible layers into one layer by holding Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and pressing E, opening that layer up in Camera Raw. And then here I just load up one of my presets that has some settings that I use pretty often in most of my images. As you can see here, I've adjusted some of my values, my saturation, vibrance, clarity, made a few curves adjustments, and over in the Effects tab, I've added a little bit of film grain, and then hit OK. To help bring back some of the golden color of the armor that I lost in the retouching process, I created a new layer, set that blending mode to overlay, and then I used a soft round brush and painted in orange around parts of the image. Lastly, for the color toning step, I went down to the adjustment layer and created a color lookup adjustment layer. Since I already liked the values of my original image, I set the blending mode of this layer to color, so that's the only thing it affects. With the properties window open on the color lookup adjustment layer, click on load 3D LUT. In this list, you already have a bunch of options that come default with Photoshop. As you can see here, my list is much larger since I've bought a bunch of LUT packs online. For this image, I went with one of the default options, Fall Colors Look. Adding a color lookup adjustment layer helps make all the colors in your image a little bit more cohesive. Generally, these lookup adjustments are too strong, so you will have to reduce the opacity, but in this case, it works just fine. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. And until next time, stay creative. Hey, real quick guys, if you want a deeper insight into my editing process, which includes getting your hands on an original Photoshop document, consider joining my Patreon. Head on over to my page where you can find a little bit more about the details. Link in the description below.